Well, there's no problem. If you had a gun, shoot him in the head. Well, good morning. Our first night, our first freezing freaking night at KOH. Let's show you how cold it got in the trailer. Well, I'd say it got cold in the trailer last night, boy. Cause right now it is 38 degrees in here. It is freezing cold in here, 38. So a little backstory why it got so freezing cold last night in the trailer. I have space heaters, bam. And I have one in the front bedroom. And I thought maybe my Honda 2000 generator would be able to push both of those suckers. Boy, was I wrong. We had this one going to keep the main part of the trailer warm. I had the one going up in the bedroom, right? Keeping the bedroom warm. They're both going. I crawl into bed. I wake up freezing freaking cold, freezing cold. I'm like what is going on? I feel the heater ain't burning. It's quiet. I hear the generators just off i'm like what the heck is happening so i get up it's three o'clock in the morning it must be two outside not 40 38 something like that but i go outside start the generator back up run inside mind you i'm just in my freaking skivvies and the breakers are popped in the trailer and so i go start the gfi bah, bah, wouldn't freaking reset i'm like oh my god the gfi took a crap so I go get tools, I'm in my boxers, I go get tools, I'm walking outside getting a freaking flathead screwdriver so I can take the GFI off the wall, see if a wire popped out the back of the GFI. Friggin' take it out of the bath, or it's in the bathroom, take it out off the wall, look in the back, wires are all good to go, GFI, pop, still not resetting. I then go to the sub panel, I'm looking at breakers, I'm looking at freaking fuses, nothing is broken on, or popped on any of that stuff. I can't even have a thought right now because I'm just numb. It's I put my sweater on, which I took off the floor. I thought it was wet because it was so damn cold. So I have a wet sweater on, well, cold sweater on. I go back outside, look at the generator. Finally, the old breaker on the generator popped, which was empowering the GFI to reset. So then I skivvy back inside, push the GFI, it resets. And I only was able to burn the front... Um, the front bedroom heater but oh my god what a freaking dilemma yeah you live and you learn i do love this mobile mansion but boy oh boy it gets cold in here let's see what the temperature is now all right we've warmed up from 42 earlier it was 38 degrees in here 38 so it's time to get some coffee going so we got all the coffee fixings up here. We got to grind our coffee. I got to go get the coffee grinder. Great, I got to go outside. It's cold. Yeah. It's sun is shining. Look at, I had her all tucked in last night. Boom! Right. Quite literally, my most favorite part of the morning is waking up and grinding some fresh coffee. My this pot. Not right now, proving me completely wrong. And yeah, I use Coffee Mate. I know it's one ingredient from being plastic, but whatever. I've pretty much said screw my 70s. All right, we got the old evil burrito. There's no way that's not evil, right? I mean, these things are freaking evil. They're so good, you want to eat like two or three of them in a row, but yeah. Eggs and green chili burritos. So we're just going to throw in the old microwave. We're going to throw it in there and send it. I don't know, three minutes sound good to you guys? Sounds good to me. Send it. Boom! Start! Your engines. Oh. Go. Go. There we go. Watch her explode. All right, so we came over here to see Phil from Down to Mob. Chris just hits me up with a Moscow mule. It's, what, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the morning? 11 o'clock in the morning? Uh, yeah, the sun's up. And it's mule time. So we're gonna have some Moscow mules. <laughs> Look at Phil rolling. We got the ambulance coming in. Two wheel drive ambulance at that. Let her eat, Phil, let her eat. Dude, oh my God, what a machine. Oh. <laughs> Look at the ambulance coming in hot. 
What do you think, brother? Oh my gosh, what a machine. What a machine, huh? That's Phil. Check him out on YouTube. He loves to mob. So along Boone Road, you got camping on one side, then you have a nasty whip road on the other side. So sometimes you get some of the racers testing their suspension, brakes, motor work, whatever they're doing. But you can get some good footage along this whoop road, you know, fairly close to uh, the vehicles with uh, being safe, you know, of course. So I'm just gonna sit it out here for, I don't know, the next couple hours and uh, see if we can't catch some of these guys testing their trucks, their brakes, whatever it may be. Let's uh, be patient. So while I was waiting for cars to go goofing on that whoop road, I heard this gentleman start up this old diesel here. Well, let me show you guys what this thing's about. They call it the abnormal because boy, oh boy, it is abnormal. Check this sucker out. It's like a tarantula is the best way to put it. Just completely custom hydraulic, Home-built didgeridoo. Look at this, guys. Incredible. Talk about some clearance, huh? I could limbo under that sucker. God, unbelievable. The mad science that has to go into thinking about every angle, what, which hydraulic lines are doing what? Gosh. Let's go take a look at the uh, valley from up on top of AT&T Hill, or T-Mobile Hill, or Boost Mobile Hill, whatever you want to call it. It's the hill that gets you freaking cell phone service. Verizon works pretty dang good here in the valley, but uh, yeah, it ain't bad from up top. If you got AT&T, T-Mobile, T-Boost, this boost, that boost, it don't matter. That's the hill you go up on top of.
All right, so this is my favorite spot in uh, Johnson Valley. I love coming up here, just checking out the valley of all the motorhomes, all the just chaos, right? It's quiet up here, down there, whole nother story. Fireworks constantly going off, loud exhaust, just everyone ripping through camps. I mean, it's awesome, don't get me wrong, but up here, kind of peace and quiet. Just a fun little crawl up here. And look how dead it is, it's so dead. I mean, there's still so many people, yet it is so dead. figure out how to get out here during the race because this is awesome out here across the lake bed all right so now we're on the race course kind of like by the lake bed and watching them just kind of pre-run through here kind of pick different lines so pretty bitching the race cars come from all the way back in those mountains back there they're pre-running way out there. And we got some guys on the lake bed going at it. Just out here goofing.
definitely taking different lines. Oh yeah, we got trucks galore coming. See, everybody loves RC car jumps. Busted it out for this kiddo over here. Ripping right behind us. Friggin' bitches. All right, day two in the books at King of the Hammers. If you guys haven't yet, like it, subscribe it. We got 14 days out here. This was only day two. So much action, so much going on. We haven't even done races yet. That's Saturday, Sunday, Saturday 1400 trucks. We have on Sunday trophy trucks. Monday, some qualifying stuff. Tuesday night, Holly if I shoot out. I mean, Thursday we have UTVs. Friday we have Everyman Challenge. Saturday we have the Ultra Fort and that's all next week. So stay tuned because we got a lot more going on.